Hey there, Rick Owner here, and I'm finally back. But uh, this time, I'm playing some Monster Camp, and today I'm joined with my wife, Fox. Hi. Yep. So Monster Camp just came out, and um, I'm we're just gonna be going this blind, so we're not gonna know stat requirements or anything. And I didn't play the demo. Fox didn't play the demo either, so we have no idea what's the difference between Monster Camp and Monster Prom. I want to be and the horny boy. Of course you do. Um, well, you already married me anyway. Um, but anyways, uh, we're just going to jump in. Uh, since there's two of us and this is the first time we're playing, uh, let's keep the voice effects on. We are going to do just a short game. Let's see. So two players. And uh, we're on the same computer, so we're doing a local game right now. Uh, so we're just going to do a short game because it's also 45 minutes. So let's see. Okay. <clears throat> ah, Camp Spooky. The stage of some of our dearest summers. Back then, we were young and unafraid. It's still <laughs> the same, the same dialogue. Um, with school far away, everything seemed possible as the sun embraced us on our way to camp. Summer has that distinct power, doesn't it? You live for the days while the nights inebriate you with possibilities. It's like life could take a turn at every corner. And for us, it did. Okay, who are you? So, okay. Uh, I'm gonna be Oz, boy Oz, and let me change my name here. Uh... I brought sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, my boy Octo is voicing Oz this time. Uh, let's see. Um, so now, basically, instead of the quiz, from what I heard, it's it's basically you choose three items they determine your stats so let me see so i am going in blind i have no idea what any of these do so i'm gonna go with these pokemon pokemon tcgs let's see okay okay and suppose camera snacks sweater mushroom guys uranium <laughs> lipstick magma trekking boots hmm let's see uh, I'm trying to think because I'm I'm going off of me this time. So, uh, snacks. Hell yeah. Um, and ah, come for some boots. Alrighty then. All right. So. Play Brian. Okay. So okay. Be Brian. Uh. Just him to Brian. Oh, you just went Brian. All right. And okay. uh, cam sounds like All a right. lot of work. Oh, I guess the items are randomized again. Okay. So, what do you want? Uh, I'm trying to think. Do I want to date Damien or want to date Scott? Because Scott's adorable. <laughs> no, it's Scott's not in this game. Oh, I thought he is. No, no, Scott's in uh, the, the 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 road trip one. Oh, I, wanted, I thought they were including all the characters. No, no, no. Oh, that sucks. Okay, I guess I'm gonna date Damien. <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, Going off of these, I would, I would think this would have bold in it, but I'm not sure. Can you go over okay, so them? there's marshmallows, bootleg one. <laughs> I guess I should have went over all the other ones, but it's fine. Oh, sketchbook. sketchbook, totally fine ukulele. That doesn't okay. Uh, too many crosswords. Cult ring. Vampire sun hat. Hmm, that's probably for the the vampire chick. Well, she's not even a vampire, really. Is she? No, they're 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 they're, they're 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 monster hunters, aren't they? No, they're witches. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. So it would still be, I think. Okay, build your own golem or the swole floaties. Uh, go with the swole floaties. Um, but in boldness. Go with the ukulele. The ukulele. Alrighty. You got more boldness. That's good. And, um, um, go with Juan because he's a. Yo, Juan. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty then. Oh, that's right. I think he uses charm. I think. Uh, maybe a little I bit. He used to. Um, one might say that the monster problem had hardened us on the highs and lows of love. But no one. But no, in love we're always absolute beginners, and summer camp was no different. No one talked about it, but the idea of summer of a summer love loomed over our heads. <laughs> The, the dialogue is so much still reminiscent of Monster yeah. Prom. Close to last day of camp, there was a meteor shower happening just two weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. 
And so, a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster prom all over again. <laughs> Everything seemed uncertain. Everything but one thing. Whoever we were asking on a meteor shower date, it oh. was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joy Johnson Johima, 23. A badass witch who wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless times. Uh... Aravi Mishara, 22, a hot-headed adventurer possessed by a curse who had turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. <laughs> Calculester Hewitt Packard, version 1.1, a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Dahlia Aquino, 20, a buff blue demon and warmonger who had <laughs> set her sights on conquering summer next. She's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Milo Belladonna, 23, a death reaper doubling as an internet influencer and who was profoundly in love with life and its earthly pleasures. Oh, they're cute. <laughs> the bus trip was long and all of summer could be shaped by the first step well taken. And so it was clear. It all came down to breaking the ice and causing a good impression with the right person alrighty time to break your oh what the heck more questions oh, that's yours, yeah. time to break the ice what's your favorite hobby okay I am let's see I'm trying to I, I this is the first go through I'm going in blind I'm trying to base it off something that I would pick uh, what's your favorite hobby I, I guess this this is kind of the closest thing very anime workout. Okay, what's your favorite hobby then? I go crimes because crimes? I date Damien. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, okay. Dahlia. Alright. <laughs> oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> Alright. Now I gotta figure out a voice uh, for her. Uh, I gotta figure I out. Guess, oh, do you want to do I voices? I'm playing female characters. It's up to you. You don't have to. It's up to you. Then you don't have to voice all of them. No, I'm saying it's like you can pick if you want to do voices, you can, and you can pick which which you want to do. If you want to do her, you can. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It's up to you. Ow. Okay, just careful. <laughs> All right. So it's up to you. So however you want to do it. <laughs> Yeah, I love anime workouts, but Cody, you just became my best friend. <laughs> okay. I try. Wait, what even is an anime workout? You picked that option, sure, but I'm willing to bet you weren't. You're not even 100% certain what it meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's an anime workout? You say it's workout that's totally anime, like bench pressing a tree or doing a magical girl transformation. <laughs> I didn't know she was a weave. Jeez. <laughs> Magical curl transportations seriously work out your abs and glutes. We should get some magical reps this summer at Coder. I fucking love it. Alright then. Hey! hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Crimes are Satan's perfect pastime. <laughs> Anytime I'm bored, I just vandalize a gas station. It really takes the edge off. I can't wait to, wait to see all the wilderness crimes I'm gonna set up, get up to at camp. I'm gonna carve Damien rules on so many historical trees. With any luck, you two will be carving Damien plus Brian forever instead. Alrighty. <laughs> we only had two weeks left to woo our crushes and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Uh, alrighty then. <laughs> I love your voice for him. It's so fucking God. funny. That's how you should make your dose oral. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, anyways. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, no. Let's see. Oh, God. What would... She likes anime, anime workouts. I think it's boldness and probably... Maybe boldness and creativity, maybe, for... Or fun. But your fun's pretty hard. Yeah. So I would go for boldness. And... Yeah, boldness and maybe raise my creativity. Yeah. It's probably boldness, creativity, and possibly fun. I would so, let's see. Yeah. Okay, let's see. What are the, what are the stats here? Let's see. So boldness is here at the manor. So we'll go there. 
You go to the haunted manor to gain some boldness, since you found a brochure that promised some boldness if you visited. Instead, you find a mischief, a mischievous demon. It was all a ruse to lure you here. The demon will take nine years of your life. You take the demon to court for misleading advertising. The jury isn't fond of mysterious demons who fool people into giving years of our life up, so you win, and the demon has to give you plus two boldness. Fuck yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. You link up with Dahlia afterwards. She practices headbutting rocks. Well, you give her pointers on headbutting rocks. What the? Okay. Hmm. That's voice. God, this is gonna be weird. I don't have no idea who this is, so. Like, yeah, it's, it's like. <laughs> Okay. Hey, stop heading my stop headbutting my rocks. Your rocks? If they're yours, how did my forehead fly get all over them, huh? Sorry, Toots. These rocks and that precious forehead blood belong to me. I've purchased Camp Spooky. <laughs> Gasp! <laughs> you stole my evil laugh. What could what could a fiend like you possibly want with a wonderful? High mortality rate, summer camp like this. Nothing at all. That's why I'm demolishing Cap Spooky and replacing it with something much more evil. A suburban shopping mall. <laughs> but no scoop. You get so many scoops. But no camp spooky means no classic summer camp experiences, and no classic summer camp experiences means no best summer ever! I won't lie, I will defeat you in glorious single combat. When I'm through with you, your broken bones will have broken bones! <laughs> you think mere violence can stop me? Please. If you break my bones, I'll just buy replacement bones from the destitute millennials. <laughs> Your physical attacks are useless against me, Dahlia, for the true source of my power is capitalism itself. Capitalism has no bones. <laughs> Alright, I have to go run an errand real quick. Someone told me there's still a rainforest that hasn't been burned down yet. I'll be right back with the bulldozers. <laughs> no, I can't let him win. I'm allergic to letting other people win. <laughs> If he's right, though, my fists are useless against him unless I defeat capitalism first. But how can I track something that has no bones? Surely capitalism must have a weak point if I only knew what it was. Oh, 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 you have an idea. Capitalism's weak point is... Let me see. Capital capitalism depends on the void in our souls, which we fill the... Cons the Filled with consumer goods. That's its weakness. Fill the void. It's genitals. Uh, I think my boldness is pretty high, so I'm gonna go with kicking it in the balls. Yeah. What do you say? Capitalism has no bones. Are you sure it has no genitals? Of course it does. How do you think it manages to fuck the poor so hard? Oh, I get it. By genitals, you mean the fact that capitalism preys upon our innate central urges. <laughs> it's fine. To attempt us to make purchasing decisions that are ultimately against our greater social interests. Thus perpetrating this cycle of consumption which empowers elites while keeping the poor destitute. Y yeah, that's for sure what you meant. Okay. That's alright. That's brilliant! Then we need to stop that and we'll be victorious. But I used up all my think power in that one big sentence. How will we ever get smart enough to destroy capitalist genitals? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Shall we recruit? <laughs> Shall we recruit Joy, Vera, that sexy purple, gummy bear Liam? Wow, she's really into Liam. No, no, you don't need that kind of competition. There's only one way to solve this. The dumbest way possible. <laughs> you mean punching the entire United States government to let all like outlaw sexy advertising? Wait, who would want that? <laughs> Dahlia took the stupid words right out of your mouth, which is hot because it's almost like kissing. You head to Washington, D.C. and punch the government right in the bills, temporarily 
temporarily putting a damper on capitalism worldwide. Curses! Promise has never been this low. Damn your socially responsible punting. You win this round, summer campers. Now I have to go lobby the government to undo all the good work you just did. That'll take me 24 hours at least. How could you inconvenience me like this? You haven't learned the last of Mr. Papa's evil CEO. You hear me? This isn't over. Well, it looks like that's the last we'll ever hear of that creep. Good work, McHoner. The way you punched that ex- uh, the president was extremely attractive. <laughs> nice. You've been working on your sexy executive punch for just this reason. You gained two creativity and one boldness. Alrighty then. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so what would you think? I forget. Uh, was it was it charm? Okay, so charm would be up here. Okay. It's the camp dome? Okay. That day at the camp dome, you all do thumb wars. That means the campers are raging, waging war against the thumb warriors, the supernaturally buffed thumb monsters from Camp Thumb. It's surprisingly terrifying. You were all sure to lose, but thanks to your quick thinking, you had to plan to fight the thumb warriors with their greatest weakness, predators without opposable thumbs. Okay. Some may say that your team sticking a pack of rabid mountain lions on the competitors is cheating, but you prefer the term strategic. You gain two charm. Right. Another day at Camp Spooky, another spooky adventure. Today you're all about that water sports life, but 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 the actual kind, not not. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh man, I can't wait to get in those lake shallows for some sweet waterboarding. You ask if perhaps he means surfing or even boogie boarding. I said what I meant, and I meant what I said. Now to just find my shackles. Ah, pass me my bag, will ya? <sighs> it's so hard to find things in here. Hiking boots, reflective jacket uh, for night murders, extra underwear, bazooka, glasses, sunglasses uh, for day murders. A club, a large club, huge club. Wait, I didn't pack this. Uh, my dads must have snuck this in. Uh, they're so worried about me. They act like I don't know anything. Also, what the fuck is this thing? You tell them that it's a cheese grater, because it's a cheese grater. A cheese grater? Nah, that doesn't make sense. Why would you grate something that's already grated? <laughs> my dads are super smart and cool, so if they put it in my bag, it must be for a good reason. Maybe it's for bludgeoning a specific type of monster, similar to a bugbear bludgeoner or a kappa bludgeoner. It could be for zombies or a djinn or Frankenstein's monsters or the embodiment of fear itself. I should just hit people in the head until I figure out what's supposed to bludgeon. Oh, oh, oh no. Maybe you should suggest an alternate use for the cheese grater that isn't bludgeoning you, uh, but it also isn't grating cheese. Okay, let's see. It's a very aggressive back scratcher to get those pesky itchy spots on your back that are hard to reach. And it's, an it's abstract modern art for use in case of an abstract modern art emergency. Okay. Possibly or smarts. Um, but this is also could be smarts too. I think that's, smarts, I think that's I that. let's see. Um, um, well, your creativity is higher. Yeah. So I don't know. think the top one's charm. It's definitely not. Okay. So yeah, do you want to do one. this one? Okay. Oh, that's creativity, so yeah. <laughs> Abstract art? <laughs> Don't be stupid. My dads are the king and other king of hell. No way to give me something useless. Plus, there's no such thing as an abstract art emergency. <laughs> okay. Alright, so it's Polly. They're coming! They're coming! Oh god, save yourselves! They're coming! Polly, are you on Super Shrooms again? No, I mean, yes, but that's not the point. A pack of wild arts critics has invaded the camp. They're horrible. All square glasses and skinny scarves. Oh, we're dead, bros. Dead. Everyone will... Everyone holds really still. Maybe they'll think we're profesh, a performance art piece. Damien poses, lifting the cheese grater aloft. The rest of you gather around him, creating a beautiful tableau? I don't know. Tableau vi vivant. Vivant. Okay. Yeah, vivant. The art critics come 
lopping, looping, loping over the horizon, running on all fours, foaming at the mouths at their, as their bleached hair flops in the breeze and their thick rim glasses jostle. A single tear of terror trickles slowly down Scott's cheek, but the art critics don't notice. They're too busy sniffing the cheese grater. Their eyes are wild as they make a mental note to write that the physical piece may have been full of holes, but the narrative it spoke to was not. The art critics gallop away, opinion, opinion wildly to one another. Thank God we're safe. This calls for a celebration. I think I'll do some super shrooms. <laughs> Wait, Polly. You already did all the super shrooms. The sound of Boo Paul's classic, classic bop, Call Me Monster, fills the air. It's Damien's ringtone. He answers on speaker. It's his dad's. Okay. Okay. Oh God. I. I, I can, okay. I, I. I. Yeah. I don't know how to do. I'm not sure how how to do Damien's dad's voice. Let me see. Okay. Hi, sweetheart. Says the King of Hell. We're on a break from shoving spiders down people's throats, and thought we'd check in on you. We wanted to make sure you saw the surprise you put in your bag. He continues. It's your very own cheese grater. We know how much you love grated cheese on your pasta, says the other king of hell. So we wanted to make sure you can have it even if the camp chef is incompetent. Which in, in which case we can also come rip his eyelids off, my darling. Wait, Brian was right? It is a cheese grater? But cheese is born grated. Oh no, says the other king of hell. We grate buckets of cheese each week just for you, our favorite son. We also packed you a hunk of... Padano, your favorite. Oh, huh, well, thanks, Dad. Uh, question. Do we think the cheese grater might also be a piece of abstract art? Uh, a pack of wild art critics seem to really appreciate it. Uh, no, son, says the King of Hell. Art critics are just stupid. <laughs> we have to go replace everyone's teeth with harmonicas now, but have a wonderful time at Camp Spooky, says the other King of Hell, and enjoy grazing cheese and waterboarding. <laughs> well, that was crazy. Who knew that cheese didn't start out grated? Certainly not us. I'm glad you gave me such a f cool fucking use for it before we knew the truth. Now go get me a bucket of water. You're a little concerned Damien is going to waterboard you, but it turns out he just wants to make pasta. The two of you enjoy a delicious pasta with grated padano. You gain two charm, one fun, and one tummy full of pasta. The best trade of them all. <laughs> Well, I don't know what the I don't know what the caps are that you need. Everyone choose. Uh, well, I don't know if we want to do this, but let's see. We want to choose a fictional character. Say your choice out loud. To the oh, there's a typo. To the other players before clicking. Okay, so fictional character. Uh, I'm just gonna say Sonic the Hedgehog. Professor Snake. Okay. Play order decided based on which character you least like to share a tent with for a week. Start oh. debating now. Um, <laughs> I uh, I don't want to say Snape. Snape, so it's the least least like. So yeah. I guess you would go first. Okay. Yeah, hang out with Sonic would be cool. So that means I lost. Uh, anyways, it's fine. So that means if you want to, you can go to, to, go to yeah, you want to go to the manor, right? That's boldness. Okay, so we'll go to the manor. Okay. That day in the haunted manor, a little clown man rides a tricycle up to you and asks if you would like to play a game. Cool, you love games. You suggest Monopoly or Scategories. The clown man tells you to find the exit key in an hour or he's going to rip all your skin off. You're not super into that idea, so you decide so you two decide to compromise by going to an escape room and solving some puzzles together. It's lots of fun. But you don't gain fun here, you gain two boldness instead. <laughs> You find Damien, Calculister, and Milo in the basement. They've discovered a secret room full of creepy artifacts just like in the movies. I guess I can do that. Uh, it's a, well, Milo is, uh, he's binary. Yeah, so, uh, so no, no non-binary. Oh, non, 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 yeah, non-binary, I mean, yeah, excuse they're, me, they're sorry MV, about that. But I mean, because all the, because I think there's only, like, the Oni chick there, and then the NV character and the witch. Well, the thing is, Calculister, I mean, Calculister, I think he's more leaning towards male, I think. Yeah. But he's also, I mean, he's a robot, so I don't know if they actually categorize him as a gender. Um, yeah. But uh, his, his voice is kind of male. Um, but yeah, my, yeah, I, I, excuse me on that, but yeah, non -bi Milo, Milo is non-binary. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to voice him, you can. Or voice them, excuse me. 
It's, I'm sorry, I got to get used to that. Um, they're blithely fucking with all of it, just like in the movies. What's up, Milo lovers? Milo here with another exciting unboxing video for you all. This week, an authentic Iron Maiden with fresh blood coming out of it. Let's take a look. Wow, a corpse impaled on some spikes. They've really gone out on the details here. Let's see what the features this corpse has. <sighs> Fuck, there's so much brutal shit here. I don't even know what I like most. This haunted dollhouse is constantly on fire and screaming. But this haunted television keeps showing me what I look like without the skin on my face. Ugh, I can't choose. Okay, hold on. Oh, God. I am participating in this foolishness as well. I have found a rotary telephone that speaks with a devil's voice. I asked it if it, we might share a common ancestor, but all it will say is blood, blood, blood. And so I am at a loss of how to res how to proceed. Oh well. You're wondering what kind of zany bullshit you should try to get your friends uh, you should try to get your friend's attention when your clumsy ass saves you the trouble by tripping over a power cord. You whack your head on some kind of large box made of glass and metal, and it lights up to reveal a kind of a fortune teller, proof that our future really is a dream of our fantasies. I don't know what that means, but I like how the dummy inside is grinning like an insane person and obviously cursed. I am mildly disturbed by the fact that it is operating despite its power cord not being plugged in. Thank you for activating. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, like I know, I know, it's a fortune teller. I'm yeah. trying to, like, I'm trying to. Well, it's also Thank you for activating me, Rusty. Uh, fortune teller. As a show of gratitude, I will answer any one question about the future. Be forewarned, however, the price of this forbidden knowledge is your soul. Raise your hand if you have a soul. Uh, nobody. Sick! Free future knowledge! Somebody, ask a question. Oh, I have a question. Can you believe how lucky we are to be alive in this point of history? I think he meant a question for the fortune teller, friend Milo. Oh, no. The only thing I question is my own limits, daily as should we all. This is the opportunity you've been waiting for. Ask a question so good it will make your friends want to have sex with you later. <laughs> okay, so this is you, so. What slang will be cool in 20 years is important to stay ahead of the curve. If you know the future, why don't you tell us what question we're gonna ask? Okay. That's boldness. Boldness or perhaps smart? This is probably smart. creativity, maybe? Or, I don't know, it could be smart. I have no idea, this is a little rough. Uh, going to go with which one do you want to do yeah it's kind of hard like um, i'm not do you know the future i mean it, yeah this could be boldness um i don't know this this one's that like, sounds like smart it's possible okay let me see what no slang guile, what slang will be cool in 20 years is important to stay out i'm thinking this one's more creativity i don't know this one's really hard I really think this one's gonna be smarts. Okay, well, which this one? Is either smarts or boldness. Okay, well, think about it. Which one do you want to pick then? I'll go with the top one. You want to go with the top one? All right. Okay, it's fun. fun. All right. Okay. okay. You'd be surprised how often I get that question, says the fortune teller. Very well. In 20 years, the most popular slang phrases will be seizing the weasel, fooling an asshole into thinking he's having sex with you when he's actually fucking a tube of Pringles. Ah. Uh... Poon Sexton, a gender-neutral alternative to wingman. Uh, okay. Poon, poon. Yeah, I, 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 well, okay, yeah. And putting your jelly on the possum, a term for the popular future practice of putting actual jelly on possums? Also, all cowboy slang will once again be in fashion. You're welcome. Finally, a term for my preferred method of deflecting unwanted sexual encounters. I'm not alone. And I'll finally be able to utilize, utilize wing pressures of all genders. I'm going to put jelly on so many possums. <coughs> God, my throat hurts from doing his voice, man. <laughs> Jesus. I, I mean, I, uh, it's fine. Oh, it's I know. But um, I don't think you're using put jelly on the possum correctly, Damien. It is not a sexual euphemism. Um, I know. 
those were two unrelated statements. Uh, I apologize for improperly parsing your statement. Partner. <laughs> well, I don't know why he has a dick face, but... <laughs> Oh shit, and turns out Calculus Sir is extremely passionate about Wild West slang. He spends the next several hours teaching you all to swear like cowboys. He called Damien a low-down biscuit-eating cabbage thief, and he doesn't even stab you for it. You gain 9,000 gumption, two fun, and one boldness. Uh, all right. All right. God, I'm trying to think. What does what does Dahlia want? Because if Dahlia wants charm, I'm fucked. Um, I bet you... But it, it could be fun. I, I, doubt it's, I, I think it could think be creativity. But I think I still need to up my boldness, but I can't do that right now. So I'm going to go... <sighs> you could try charm, but... It's either charm or fun, maybe. Mm. I mean, because your fun's already eight and your boldness is already eight. I don't know if I'm going to do char charm, though. Because I need to have a high... This one's hard because I don't I don't know I don't want to look it up though it's gonna be blind if I if I mess it up then I mess it up I want to do it blind this time and then I'll I'll figure it out later on another playthrough but um I'm trying to think I'm thinking I'm thinking maybe Dahlia is Dahlia is possibly fun. I think she's fun or, fun or creativity, remember? Because of the. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because of the anime. That's why. Um, let's. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's yeah, let's. Charm. Not charm. Uh, creativity. creativity yeah, I'm let's go with creativity. What's creativity is. Why can't I remember what creativity looks like? Um, uh, where is creativity? This one. Oh, is it that? Oh, yeah, that is creativity. I guess. Yeah. That's... The smarts is here. Yeah, I can't even remember. Okay. All right. That day, the Monster Scouts hike around the camp cleaning up litter to respect nature and stuff. Nobody but Coach gives a damn about picking up trash, but it does quickly become the, a contest to find the coolest garbage. Some find used condoms. Others find weirdly shaped fruit. You somehow find a Rembrandt. It's an original. The mystery of how the Rembrandt ended up there will go on to trigger the most epic adventure will all go on during the summer, but it won't happen on screen. But you still gain two creativity just by looking at it. It's so magnificent. You're recovering from that interaction when Dahlia almost tramples you with her raw guac hard cows. Calves. Okay. Um. <clears throat> oh, hey, McOwner. I didn't see you beyond the majestic silhouette of my own flexing muscles. <laughs> I've got to stand stop physical congestion if I'm ever going to earn my FBI agent badge before the end of summer. You're about to explain to Dahlia that how that's a different kind of badge than she probably thinks it is. When you notice another Dahlia in the vicinity? What the fuck? Okay. What are you looking at, McGonagher? I'm flexing my quads right now. You should be looking at me. Who are you, stranger who looks almost exactly like me? Explain yourself at once! What the fuck is this? Um, I don't know if I should voice this one just because it's a different one. That's fine. Okay. I don't look like you. You look like me because I'm Dahlia Aquino. Ra ra ra. God. Why kill ourselves with these two fucking voices? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Jesus. You're not me. I am. You lack necessary muscles. On the contrary, since I'm the real Dahlia Aquino, the real Dahlia Aquino looks like this, and since you don't look like this... Gasp! I'm the imposter, but how could I be? Am I such a master of disguise that I've even fooled myself? No, you're not a master of disguise. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> the fuck? Counselor Fludge! Okay. That's right, Dahlia. It was me all along. You couldn't tell because I was wearing a mask. Oh what the He's fuck? Scared. Okay. I, I don't know what kind of voice to give him yet, but... I okay. Voice. Yeah. I mean, I could, but let's see. Okay. Your, your ingenuity knows no bounds, Counselor. If I only had your master of the art of an infiltration, I might make a better candidate for the FBI. Alas, my followers, blue skin and extreme handsomeness render me totally unfit. 
for undercover work. <laughs> Why I need to pose as a contestant in a beauty pageant in order to stop a domestic terrorist flying a fun-filled rope starring Sandra Bullock. I may render myself in inconspicuous due to running so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Please, counter Fludge, teach me your ways. I'm willing to devote all my time to this, destroying all romantic relationships in the meantime. What? No, fuck that. Show Dahlia that you're the better counter to her by suggesting some place where her natural assets would really help her blend in. Okay, a utopian society of buff suburbs. <laughs> and awkward old conflict, okay. Or it could be creativity. Um, oh, class boy, you know. Uh, my boldness is my boldness is higher than my creativity, yeah. so I think I'm gonna go with the buff Smurfs. I think, yeah. Oh, it's creativity. It still worked. It okay. still worked. So that's fine. Um, okay, let's see. Mm, let me see. An older, an older teacher kind of person. That's a fantastic idea, McOwner. A true master of disguise always changes their surroundings to match their appearance. That's why I carry on at least three life-size statues of myself at all times. You'd make a great disguise instructor. That settles it, then. I'm off to kidnap Buff Smurfette and take her place to solve a female status of Buff Smurf Village. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dahlia heads off to execute her cunning infiltration while Counselor Flodge... Fl Flodge? Yeah. Blends into the scenery by stepping behind one of his life-size statues. A couple days later, Dahlia tracks you down and nearly clotheslines you in, in her enthusiasm. She's so cute, though. I really <laughs> like her. The last few days have been an orgy of discovery. I've blown Buff Smurf Society wide open. At first, I was worried they noticed, but it, notice I replaced Buff Smurfette because I'm taller and buffer and have horns and never say the word Smurf instead of the word I can actually meant to say. <laughs> Fuck, she talks to but the others never even noticed the difference. It's like being a female prevented from being able to give even the smallest fraction of a shit about who I was. Wow. At first I was delighted at my success as an undercover mission, but then I began to wonder what if going undercover to Burf's Buff Smurf Village wasn't my true mission, but if being undercover was just a cover. That's when I realized the truth that I was an undercover journalist posing as an undercover officer posing as a buff smurf in, or in order to write the expose of decade. I published my... <laughs> You're gonna blow out your throat. <laughs> I'm not here to talk tomorrow. I published my first hand experience in an insightful... In an insightful... Article... <laughs> Blue buff women everywhere. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I should probably go and tell you buff Smurfette and I'll let her go home. My do deed is done. <laughs> you wave goodbye to Dahlia, content in the knowledge that you've that you've helped to make a world a better place. And did that statue of Counselor Flaw just wink at you? Uh, you gained two charm and one fun. Jesus Christ. All right, let's trade places. Everyone choose an object. Say your choice out loud to the other player before clicking. Um, let's see, an object. A toenail clipper. Microphone. All right. Describe how you would kill someone with your chosen object. The player, the play order is decided based on whose explanation is most plausible. Start debating now. Um, well, I mean, I have a toenail clipper. I'm gonna freaking like grab them and then clip along their neck until it actually gets an artery and 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 clips it open and it starts bleeding everywhere and they bleed out okay well i'm just gonna take the fucking thing and shove it in your fucking eyeball into your skull and which, the upside of your brain uh, the which, back of the the, the back. of the microphone yeah that'd probably be faster so yeah <laughs> how how you explained it so yeah you can go first uh yeah Oh Jesus Christ! We're only on the. Oh my God! We're only at nighttime. Oh. Oh wait, what is this? Oh, you choose who you want to sit with. What is this thingy? It's a mon. <laughs> it's a mon. I want to oh. date the mon. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want to date the mon. Okay. Well, 
Uh, knowing, knowing them is probably a option somehow, but okay, you sit here. Like any night around a camp spooky campfire, uh, the air is filled with the smell of smoke and the sound of bickering. For the last time, Damien, you simply don't have what it takes. What? How you? How can you say that? How? How can I not have what it takes to be your next bad guy? I'm the baddest dude I know. See, that as it may, you're not the baddest dude that I know. I fought many impressive villains in my time. Who, who've done far more villainous things than you ever have. I can get there. I can be more villainous. The whole thing is just trying to save the world. Why would I ever encourage you to do more villainous? Well, if you don't want to encourage me to get more villainous, then I think you need to admit that I'm already a villain. I have a real bad guy to fight, Damien. Some of them are probably plotting unspeakable crimes right this second. Give it a rest. Of course, the most unspeakable crime of all would be missing out on this golden opportunity to impress one of your campmates. You leap into action to avert that potential crisis. Okay, let's see. So you want the one that favors Damien, so... There is no villain more dangerous than Damien is to his own well-being. Be the hero, Joy, and stop him from causing himself much, so much harm. It doesn't matter how villainous Damien is or isn't, because he doesn't fit the most important description for a common villain. Wanting to fuck Joy. Okay, oh, so Jesus I'm guess Christ. I'm thinking that's hers, So because he's yeah. saying that he's not a villain, so I would think the top one. Yeah, go to the top one. Yeah. Like one of Brian's semantic loopholes designed to purge <laughs> with his crush. But I'm willing to hear you out, so Damien, what have you been doing to make yourself a danger to yourself? Oh boy, let me tell you. I arm wrestled a crocodile for a piece of gum, but it was my arm versus the crocodile's mouth. I used a beehive as a punching bag and wore a bear trap as a bracelet for and for breakfast I had hot sauce and nothing but hot sauce and, the, and also the hot sauce bottle. And I went sledding down a mountain at a 90 degree angle straight down and the sled was my own ass sitting on nothing but the ice and then I did laundry without fabric softener. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Are these really all the things you've done in your life? Lifetime joy. These are all the things I've done in the past 48 hours. <laughs> okay, maybe I can work with that. I think it's pretty clear the first precaution we need to take. Epic laser sword showed out at the edge of a cliff? No. The first thing I'm going to do is wrap you up in bubble tape. Yes, our first real villain fight. Joy wraps Damien tightly in bubble wrap as he celebrates his defeat. And this is good for you for three reasons. One, Damien is thrilled, so mission accomplished. Two, Damien is now at least 26.4% safer from his own shenanigans. Three, Damien actually looks really hot wrapped in bubble wrap. Uh, is this your kink now? Apparently this is your kink now. You secretly stash away some bubble wrap just in case you get to uh, battle Damien yourself one day. <laughs> Where to sit? All right, so I'm gonna still sit here. Oh wow, it's both of them, but I'm on Dahlia this time Later you're chilling by the fire when you hear a terrifying blood-curdling yet also slightly adorable sound Dahlia and Avery's hysterical giggling. Yeah Ara Ravi's why would the fire? I don't know why I said it like that. Ara Ravi's hysterical giggling Finishing up our weekly girl talk session. Yeah. yeah, girls. Yeah, girls talk rules. I and Ravi have so much to talk about. The next topic about our girl talk agenda is healthy eating habits. Yeah, good topic. Usually I have a small breakfast, but then. I think the most important meal of the day is the one you consume right before the dungeon mini boss fight. And 
obviously, we should only be eating top-notch ingredients. If you start consuming B-tiered meals, you'll miss out on a lot of potential stack buffs. Okay, I guess I could be the 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 the, 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 the <laughs> you're the one missing out, Avari. Who cares if Doritos are D-tier items that technically lower your offense stats? They're ch they're a cheesy mouth explosion. It's worth it. Ha! That reminds me of a really awesome dinner I had a few days ago. Did you guys know that I like grenades? That lit grenades are actually really high in fiber. If you have a demon metabolism like me, you gotta make sure you you get plenty of soluble and soluble metals in your diet. That's why I eat lots of airplanes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, that makes sense. For me, I've got to keep a healthy balance between eating full meals and just regenerating using a flask potion. Potions are convenient, but you can overdo it. For real, it's like me and Battle Line. I love to have two or three casts after victory. But if I drink too many, I slightly less bright blue the next day. <laughs> Dahlia, what do you think about the whole 30 thing? You know, when you're supposed to kill a whole 30 enemies every day for exercise? I get what people do, but it takes a lot of bit of fun out of murdering if you gotta do other enemy counting all the time. You two are such food jocks. What about you, Mick Owner? If you're going to girl talk with us, you've gotta give us the tea on your healthy eating skills. Quick, express an opinion on healthy eating habits. Impress one of these lethal hotties. Seize the moment, McOwner. Okay, honestly, my typical meal is eating 34 uncooked potatoes in the middle of a boss battle. That's probably for uh, Avari. Um, I eat my enemies for breakfast, for, din yeah, for dinner, and sometimes a snack around 2 a.m. Okay. <laughs> Fuck yeah! That's hardcore, McOwner. Straight up devouring your enemies is totally a boss bitch move. Why did you <laughs> Also, most of my enemies are super high in proteins that really help me burn muscle mass. Dahlia, I heard the way that you murder your enemies can really alter the flavor. Is that bullshit? No, it's super true. I find that enemies taste way grassier and gamier if they are perish in total fear. They die violently, their meat is a little tougher, but so much rich flavor. You can really taste bravery, you know? Whoa, good to know. I learned so much from Girl Talk, Dahlia. Don't you tell your enemies that you're going to eat them, or do you consider them bad manners? I've heard it both ways. Well, I used to try and keep it on a DL, but one time I was fighting the head general of this opposing demon army, and he noticed that I had a bib on, ha! It was so funny. He was like, Warrior General Dahlia Kino, what is the meaning of your bib and what is silver <laughs> writing attached to your belt? <laughs> Why does she talk so much? <laughs> and so it's just like, dude, I'm obviously gonna eat you once I defeat you, and he got all freaked out and stuff. <laughs> Dahlia, that's hilarious. He's scared of getting eaten. What a coward. I know, it was so funny. I had to mess with him so. The whole battle I kept sprinkling with salt and pepper. He was nervous I didn't land a single blow. Wow, so eating your enemies is just nutrients. Nutritious. It's a viable psychological battle tactic. Ha ha ha, so true. Ah, oh, it's, so, it's so good to remiss upon all this delicious meals and vegetables battles I've had. Shit, I think this is the last one. I'm pleasantly surprised you're also an enemy eater, McGowan, and maybe next time we can tag team a boar demon and make a meal of you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Winky face? <laughs> Whoa, you're not exactly sure what Dahlia means, but she could be asking you out on a date, or asking you to bang on top of a dead pig demon. Either way, it's a win. Alright, so you came back. What'll it be then? Oh, I guess we can't, we can't do it because we're not, we're, we're when we're sharing thing. a controller, so it's like, well, no yeah, choice. so I guess, we're gonna, I guess it's just gonna be random. I guess I guess they have a little mini game with the controller or something, but wait, what? What happened? It just it clicked. Okay, ah, uh, okay. Oh, uh, this is Juan the magical Latino cat, I think. Yeah. It's like he's doing the, doing the store thing, I guess. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, what kind of? I, I don't want to be bad with it, but okay. <clears throat> ah, welcome, welcome. 
You new here? Don't fret. Let me explain how this works. I will prepare for you a drink. The drink of the day! You may choose to drink that one. But if you're not interested, you're lucky. There's a mystery box with a second option. It could be better, it could be worse. But one thing is for sure, it will be mysterious. And these drinks, look, choose whatever you want, but I'm not responsible for whatever you put in your mouth. I'm a wizard in training, so for you to test my concoction is somewhere between kind and reckless. So get ready and good luck. Okay, so you're first. Okay, so what do you say? Will you take? So what do you say? Will you take the drink of the day? So do you want this? Let's see. Or would you prefer the mystery box? Okay, so what do you want? Do you want? I want the drink. It's pretty. You want the drink? Okay. All right. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. And you passed. Your price is the drink you chose. <laughs> You're rolling around. Oh, ah, uh, sex on the beach. Drink of the day. But it looks cool. What do you say? Will you take the drink of the day? Or would you prefer the mystery box? I'm going to take the drink. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. And you passed. Your prize is the drink you chose. <laughs> Let's see, what do I get? Sex on the beach? Alright, did I just... Ah, uh, a sex on the beach. I brought this drink to the next level, as you can see. Give it a try. I'm sure it'll be a fun ride. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay, Brian. Old... Was it Chung... 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 Ah, the old Chum champagne. A drink to share with a good friend. Choose a stat you and your old chum Choose a stat and you and your old chum will swap it learning from each other. Oh You know friendship can make you better or worse. Oh, I guess you have to choose me and you're gonna choose a stat to swap with me well, That's interesting You can only choose me. Oh God, what do you what would you want to swap with me? You want to swap smarts? All right I like straws All right this is the part where I leave before you puke all over me. Ciao. Ha. Ah, okay. Interesting. Let's trade places. Everyone choose a fictional character. Say your choice. Oh, it's another one. Um. I need. A, I need a real second. A fictional character? Yeah, I just need a second. Okay. Since I want some Sonic, I'm gonna go with Tails. Tails this time because I chose Sonic last time. Alright. <coughs> I'm going to go. Oh yeah, step on me, mommy. Um, you're the manager of a burger joint. Player orders decided based on which physical character would make the best assistant manager. Start debating now. Uh, assistant manager? Yeah, because I think the animal will be like... Yeah, okay. I mean, she would be a good normal manager, but... I mean, even assistant manager, she's not a slave driver. Maybe. So let's say Tails. Okay, yeah. I think... Yeah, I think yeah. in retrospect, I think so. You would be more. You would be able to work with him better. I hope I choose. I think. Already. Well, I mean, there's only two weeks, yeah. and that 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 whole thing. We've been at this for almost an hour, and it's only been one week. But it says week two now. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Yeah, it's week two now. So yeah. So, so. Oh my God. Anyways, um, God, I need to figure out. I have a lot of fun. I need to raise my boldness. I think anyway. That day in the haunted manor, you accidentally stumble upon a cult meeting in the hallway. The cultists are wearing terrifying black robes, standing over a bloody body and chanting. You try to flee, but one of them shoves a flyer in your hand. The ink burns your eyes to read, but you manage to find the words, New recruits get heal, health, heal, health care benefits with the same, with same day sign up. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> what sold? You gain a bunch of new cultist buddies and your new insurance covers two boldness, accrusion. Cool. Okay. Hey, Magoda, get your sorry ass in here. We found a room in a manor that isn't haunted somehow. You follow Dahlia into a room, only to find that it's fucking crawling with ghosts. Oh, don't worry about them. This is where the ghosts go when they're on break. No spooky stuff at all. Yeah, and I'm taking advantage of their relaxation by killing them for bonus EXP. 
Hey, I thought we weren't gonna fight any ghosts in this room. We did say that. Actions speak louder than words, Joy. My therapist taught me that. Guys, there's right in a window over there. You didn't tell me there was reading in this room. At least it's written in blood. That's kind of cool. I know what I told you last summer. What? Or, <laughs> I know what you did last summer, huh? That's supposed to be... What the fuck? Oh my god. It's some kind of weird Freddy like Jason reject. Okay. <clears throat> god. I, I don't want to make another Damien like voice, but it's no, like. Let's see. Just be loud and it means I know what you did last summer. Oh. Just the knife guy. Hey, knife guy. Do you know what the writing on this one is all about? My name is Jerry, not Knife Guy. You can't just ask me to tell you what you did last summer. You did it. You should know. But if you also know, shouldn't you be able to tell us what specific thing you're referring to? Ugh. You guys don't get it. You're supposed to frantically ask yourself that question before dramatically remembering the answer right before I stab you. Here. Maybe it will help I stab you all a lot. Uh, I can't believe you don't remember. So rude. You'd hate to be rude and also to be stabbed. Luckily, you're pretty sure you know what event from last summer Jerry is referring to. He obviously means the two week period where you all got really into anteater documentaries. Uh, probably, I'm not gonna do that. His birthday, you forgot Jerry's birthday. So we're gonna go yeah, with that. Fun, so. Yeah, God, I have so much fun. True, Jerry. Yes. <laughs> and it's just like, I mean, I know I'm just this guy who's always trying to kill you at summer camp, but I'm also a person, you know? I have, I have feelings just like everyone else. Sometimes those feelings are excitement about stabbing because I love stabbing, but sometimes they're feelings of loneliness because nobody remembered my birthday. I even tried carving my birthday into my victim's bodies for a while, and, and like a subtle, subtle hint. But the only people who cared were the cops, and not for the right reasons, you know. That's horrible! I don't know what I would do if someone forgot my birthday! Probably raise their village to the ground, because that's what I did last time it happened! I get it, but my, but my therapist says even the loneliest birthdays are an opportunity to celebrate ourselves. Do you celebrate yourself, Jerry? No, I, I never learned how. I've been so busy stabbing other people that I've never learned how to stab my own insecurities. Am I the only one who's a little creeped out that we're standing around showing empathy for a serial murderer right now? <laughs> yep, come on guys, let's throw a birthday party for Jerry! You bust out the party streamers and the fake blood and soon turn the haunted manor into a veritable party utopia. Wow, wow, guys, I, I don't know what to say. You even made the cake in the shape of a dead guy. I just like I like it. The six of you, in, including Hex, have a wonderful time at the party. Even Joy grudgingly joins a game of pin the knife on the team. He'll probably go right back to murdering people after this is over, but you still feel like you've done a good deed. And that's because you have no morals. You do have. Two charm and two creativity, though. I'm one creativity. <laughs> Alrighty then. Oh, you can't do. What was the other thing for Damien besides boldness? I would think it was charm and fun. Then. Let's do charm. So charm is here again, I think. That day, you join the merciless trials of the Camp Dome. Your team is faced with a potato sack race. It seems easy, but this is the Camp Dome, and so the potato sacks are filled with swarms of bees! <laughs> Not the bees! Not, not, not the bees! Ah, ah. Your teammates are discouraged, but both because they are not fond of bees and because the enemy team is mostly comprised of sentient bees. Aren't all bees sentient anyway? Uh, giving them a clear advantage over you. 
It all looks dire for you, but you use your cunning and remind the enemy team that the bee population versus is ex inexplicably decreasing and the bees are heading towards unavoidable extinction. Oh god. Urgh. This fact really messes with the enemy's team's head, giving you the edge you need to win. Your nasty leadership skills get, grant you two charm. Damn. Rough, dude. Uh, later, you stop by the dome to look for a can of Pringles you left there. Oh, oh God. It's been a while, but if people remember. Uh, but you accidentally get drafted into the Dome Battle Royale that happens every Tuesday. The rules are simple. Join a team of three, lock the door to the dome, fight to the death. 400 warriors have entered the Camp Dome today. Only three will leave. Uh, only three will leave alive. Hopefully you will be one of those three, and Come hopefully on. you'll find your Pringles, and hopefully they're not covered in stuff. <laughs> yes! Murder, baby! Eat my ass! Luckily for you, you managed to get Damien, Arar, and Ar 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 Arari on your as your teammates. Jesus Christ. They're killing it, literally. These two really seem to thrive in extreme violence. And stay down! Got you. Yes, I haven't killed two guys in the same crossbow in a long while. The, in, in a while. The trick is to line it up just right and aim for the eye socket. So sick. <laughs> Meh. Kind of unimaginative to ask me. I just killed an entire team by eating them alive. Just me, a fork, and my fucking fists. OMG, I went through such an eating people alive face. Did you know that a normal human can survive someone eating their face, but they'll die if you eat their brain? Damien, did you just call did you just call this my no scope crossbow double kill headshot unimaginative? Are you kidding me? I'm carrying this team. We're only in diamond skill tier because of my battle rage massacre at the start of the game. That was a 12 kill streak. Bullshit! I've got way more kills than you, and mine were way sicker. I lit my chainsaw on fire, Avery. You should be taking notes. Arabi. Arabi. Well, bros, calm down. Just look at it this way. You're both way better murderers than Brian. He hasn't even gotten one kill this whole game. LOL. It's true, you haven't killed any enemies yet. You thought you killed one person, but then you realized that you just lulled them to sleep with your gentle, non-lethal punches. You can't look like a pacifist in front of these two adorable psychopaths. Impress your friends with your raddest technique for indiscriminate murder. Tobacco use is one of the leading causes of death in our modern society, so beat the shit out of them with your enemies with cigarettes. In the words of Theodore Roosevelt, speak softly and tie an angry yeah. badger to the five loaded guns at the end of a big set. I'm pretty sure that's boldness, I think. Yeah. You want to do that one? Yeah. I love dangerous animals, especially when they're tied to sticks and duct taped to guns. Uh, that's uh, kind of romantic, Brian. Hot. You quickly scavenge the dome and find all the raw materials you need. You create an unholy combination of stick, badger, and gun. The ultimate spear of death is born. With the spear in your hand, you are filled with a dark, evil, primal power. You lose consciousness as your body is lost in the trance of battle. You cannot see, you cannot think, but you hear, and all you hear is the rattle of death, the cries of a rabid badger, and the spurt of exploding heads around you. Two hours later, Morty the Minotaur is smoking a cigarette right outside the dome. The smell of blood and death mingle with his cigarette fumes. Okay. Oh god, look at this vampire dude. Okay. Let's see how this voice. Mm. Nerdy? Yeah, not necessarily nerdy, but mm. it's kind of like. Hmm. Hail and well met, BFF. Are we still on the crash camp to Spooky's Battle Royale? You know, I adore ruining their summer camaraderie. Okay. No, don't go in there, Dimitri. I barely got out with my life, okay? I can't stand losing to you. Or lo I can't stand losing you. Are they a thing? I guess so. They're BFFs. Oh. Morty, my dear cherished BFF. What monster could possibly scare a half-man, half-bull with your strength and girth? They're not <laughs> well, <laughs> Brian is in, dome, is in the dome, and he was way out of my league, okay? I've never seen anything like it. I was so scared that I got a half- Jesus Christ. Jesus. 
He had this awesome weapon, and I, it was like a st Why did he- his fucking heart's cut off its- okay. It was like a stick, but way more dangerous than a normal stick. I don't know how else to describe it. Look at his ass cheeks. A stick. Okay. That's horrible. Brian is truly a terrifying warrior. Come, BFF. Let's leave this foul place and take a hot bath to Okay, yeah. Yeah. While Mori and Demetria are bathing, you have an awesome time murdering everyone. You win the battle royale, your friends love you. And it turns out the Badger is a licensed accountant. The Badger does your tax for you and you gain two fun and one smarts. Oh my Jesus Christ. <sighs> All right, everyone chooses a song. Say your choice out loud to the other players before clicking. Oh, a song? To say your choice out loud. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, uh, the was it? This is a song that doesn't end. The one that's on whatever lamb chops thing. What is love? <laughs> All right. Play or decide based on how bad of an idea it would be to send the song to aliens as an introduction to the human race. Start debating now. Oh my god. Um, both of them are. I think, actually, at least in my opinion, I think sending them the most annoying song is kind of bad. There's a song that never ends, and it goes on and I on. I think if you friend. say, what is love? Then they're just going to come and pillage it and just take everyone as lovers. I don't... Steal hmm. them away. I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying, this one's like, they're both they're both weird or and bad. You just say random. Yeah, let's random it. I'm not sure. There's not really. I don't think there's a. At least, I don't think there's a clear one. All right. Okay. Almost done. Almost. I hope I choose correctly. All right. So. Okay. Yours? What do you mean? Oh. Oh. Okay. I'm not gonna go. I'm gonna have to try to risk it. I'm not gonna go bold this because. Um. Well, I don't know. God. If. I don't know, maybe Boldness isn't the main staff for Dahlia, because the main stat for Boldness is probably for Damien, so... I would go with Charm, I'm pretty sure creativity. Either Charm or Creativity is for... I don't think she's Charm. She's maybe it's creativity. maybe it's Creativity because of the anime thing, so I'm gonna do Creativity again, and hopefully that's enough. Okay. Let Day and the Monster Scouts, you all learn how to build Scarecrows. That's vaguely nature-related, right? You decide to take it a step further, though you add a Magical Crystal to... You found in a cave last month to your scarecrow to turn it into a sentient being. The scarecrow is very grateful to have been made alive. You take your new friend out for a soda and have a very pleasant afternoon. Then you're forced to dis disassemble him so the next group of scouts can use the materials. Oh, fuck, dude. That's rough. Your scarecrow begs you to not to relinquish to your gift of life, but you're a dedicated monster scout first. The scouts appreciate your dedication to organization. You're rewarded with two creativity. Fuck. Damn it. That's rude. That's fucking. That's really fucking dark. Um, later that night, you get all gussed up for your date with Dahlia. She said she had some intense physical activities planned. Awooga! However, when you go find her, you're surprised to see her surrounded by a horde of demonic soldiers. Okay, yeah. Oh, hey, MacOwner! Listen, I've got bad news. I forgot to volunteer the armistic my. Army sit. My army sit to. <sighs> <laughs> oh, hey, Mikona, listen! I got bad news. I forgot I volunteered to army sit my buddy general. Uh, class, girls! <laughs> Let's army tonight! I'm sorry, I can't dodge your responsibility, but I'll make it up to you. Maybe you can help me wash them tonight. Right now, I'm cooking a nutritious meal of cruel and enemy blood formula. We couldn't get the fresh stuff on short notice. His powder substance is pretty. As she's speaking, one of the soldiers pulls a pulls a pulls meekly on Dahlia's sleeve. Um, Miss General Aquino, he says, I gotta go potty. Ah! I told you before you left the hell. Fine, anyone has to come with me, bring a towel, and bury your own pill base. McOwner, maybe you can figure out a way to entertain the little war machines while I'm gone. Then we might be able to spend a lot of time together. Every day this universe tests your patience. Well, whatever. If it means some alone time with Dahlia, you can find a way to distract the giant evil darlings for an hour. What sort of activity will you give the demonic soldiers to do so you and Dahlia can make love, not war? 
went on to soothing prop war propaganda on the TV to entertain them, to entertain and distract them, keep them busy by giving them a fun assignment, a personal essay about their experience. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that one. Oh, God, I have so much fucking fun. I may, maybe I'm locked out. Maybe that's her secondary stat. I don't know. Or that's her first stat. I don't know. Hey, not bad. Let's go check on the camp storage cabin. I think I saw some all propaganda VH tips last time I was in there. I I think I accidentally skipped the last one. Oh well. Yeah, you. Maybe yeah, I I stuff. clicked I clicked on accident. Uh, you two head over to check out some of the old the, the old storage cabin for some, some materials. Okay, let's see you got pillaging treasure planet Oliver and the company coal mine. The little mermaid buys a third Liberty loan. Ah, here's a classic. The poking no yet. Triad beheads the aristocrats. I watched it so many times as a kid. Well, that explains a lot about Dahlia's outlook on the levees, at least. You bring a couple of VHSs and shipper the army men into the camp auditorium. There you make them cozy with some blankets and clockwork orange eye spats. Wait, and clockwork orange eye, eye spat. Well, clockwork, cock, cock, clockwork orange eye spat. Specula to ensure maximum fun while absorbing the propaganda film. Which is your eyes yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone loves it. They sing along with their favorite propaganda songs and giggle at Pinocchio Clariat's impassioned speech against the bibbity boppity bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie, or whatever. Good work, McLooner. They should keep them occupied long enough for us to have a bit of alone time. Fuck yeah! You two sneak off to get physical together, using the workout regimen that Dahlia specifically designed for you. <laughs> well, it's not exactly what you're expecting, but it was a very sweet gesture and intimate in its own way. You also gain two fun and one charm. Okay. All right. Let's go. Uh, boldness. boldness All right. That day you venture into the haunted manor. Everything is going fine. And you're reassured on how brave you are. When suddenly a ghost, or is it just someone wearing a blanket with two holes, it's hard to tell the difference, appears and whispers in your ear. Remember one day you'll be long gone and no one will remember you. All the struggle you endure will become a better version of yourself both personally and professionally and eventually mean nothing. Jesus. The ghost leaves you, believes you while you take all in, gain two boldness in the process. All right. You're wandering through the woods, hoping to meet some slutty pine cones when you see Damien. Hey, dumbass, come here. Check out my fucking trap. <laughs> He's crouched down on the ground and seems to be petting the dirt. Actually kind of psyched that you're here. I know that you do that cute thing where you're super dumb sometimes, so I'll explain. You know about wildfires, it's right? boy! <laughs> oh, fucking shit. Did they put that in there that quick? And by wildfires, I always mean files that run wild in the forest. Uh, the one that I've been trying to catch all summer? Well, I'm about to catch one. Okay, maybe it's not that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Using this awesome hole in the ground that I covered with leaves and shit. So the next time a wildfire runs over here, it'll fall in the hole. Boom. And now I'll train that wildfire to be my pet. And we'll have an unbreakable bond for life. God, I can't fucking wait. That wildfire is going to look like such a noob when it falls in. Ha! Now, come on. Hide in this tiny bush with me until a, wi until a wildfire runs by. You take one look at the bush. It's super small. Hiding in there with Damien is going to require some real close quarters. You thirstily fall right behind him. And surprising no one, you both step on Damien's trap and oh, fall into God the hole. Damn it. <laughs> wow, well, fuck yeah! My trap is so good it even tricked me, its own creator! That's a pretty fucking metal hole! <laughs> Damien passed the wall of the hole with pride. It's adorable. Oh my god, wait! If this hole was going to trap a wildfire, we just. and we just fell in it. Wait, holy shit! Are we trapped in this hole? I made this trap myself, so obviously there's a 0% chance that anyone can escape it. There's literally no point in even trying to get out! Fuck! I'm just going to state the obvious. We're definitely going to fucking die in this hole. Are you listening to me, Brian? We will die here. <laughs> At this point, we just gotta accept the truth and try to adjust our new lives in this hole. I'm officially making this corner of the hole our bathroom. Oh my god, my throat hurts so much. <laughs> wow, Damien is definitely committed to your new hole lifestyle. It would be rude not to follow suit. Quick, adjust your new living situation and make the best of it. 
Okay. Attract the morbid interest of mass media to cover your tragedy. Maybe they can throw you some free pizza. Is this hole so different from your normal life? Aren't we all trapped in a hole called society? Best you can do is give the hole a cool name like Fuckberg. Um, God, I don't know. Um. Well, let's see. The. I, tr I know. I'm attracted to more. <sighs> hmm. I would say that's either charm. But it could also be creativity, maybe. Like, but like, trapped in the whole civil society. This, I think, this leaned more towards smarts to me, but I don't know. So I don't know what you want to do. I love the bottom one, but I don't know if it's. Well, I mean, I have five and six. So. I think this this is might be charm, though. I think this is charm. All right, let's go with that. You sure? Yeah. Oh, it's fun. Okay, it still works. There's only one way to deal with a disaster like this. Turn the whole thing into a media circus that the public can gawk at. You tweet, two hot people trapped in a hole. Tragedy. Your story has everything. A sexy demon, a filthy hole, and tragedy. But not too much tragedy. Within a few minutes, tons of reporters are showing up to cover the whole thing. <laughs> Maria here with... Maria here with Channel 9 News. Two hotties caught in a hole. <laughs> Is this yet more proof of the dangers of fracking? More details, details at 10. Are video games too risky for teens? Learn all about the new dangerous video game train, Dig Dug Game, where the teenagers are throwing themselves in the holes for fun and sex. Another controversial leg ill side effect of vaccines. <laughs> hole jumping. Will vaccinating your children lead them to getting hold? Don't get your child become a hole. Don't let your child become a hole teen. Jesus Christ. The, the the reporters all want some juicy sound bites from you and Damien, so they bribe you with hot, fresh pizza. Are you rolling? I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay. As a whole teen, I'm down here because millennials have killed the housing industry. Now give me a slice, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you and Damien eventually collapse from exhaustion and also too much pizza. The next day, you wake up and the reporters are gone. There's just one leftover camera guy in the woods. Wait, where did they all go? We need pizza or we're going to die in this hole. And obviously the pizza, the pizza needs to be free pizza. Hey, camera guy. You're here for our tragic hole story, aren't you? Give me some pizza and I'll say anything you want. Nope, you whole kids are old news. Everyone will, everyone's moved over to those kids trapped in the washing machine. No, I need my free pizza. What if it's say if I fell into this hole because we're addicted to sex? That's got to be worth at least a slice, right? Hmm... I liked your desperation and willingness to say or do anything for free food. Have you guys ever considered doing reality TV? You and Damien agreed to do a reality show. Two hot people, one deep hole. <laughs> At first, most people think it's porn, but after a few episodes, the show becomes a total hit. You and Damien survive tons of shit. Video revelations from your exes, cooking challenges, and the unexpected inclusion of a third hot person. Jason Momoa! Jesus Christ. Get there, Brian! Oh god, get it in there, Brian! Don't let the elimination ceremony dharma distract you! We can't let Jason Momoa beat us in this omelette making challenge! You and Damien end up winning the whole reality show in the season finale. The grand prize is a short ladder that allows you to exit the hole. And also another free pizza. The whole reality show experience created a lifelong and emotional bond between you and Damien. Oh, and you also get three boldness. Damn, dude. That's good. I think we're finally on that last. Yeah, last day of summer. Sure all right, so we get one more, and it's gonna. Oh, I guess. All right, I guess this is it. Yep. I don't know if my stats are good enough. Let's see. Do you ask? Oh, oh, they. That's kind of weird. They. All right. They need to fix that. All right. Yeah, they're gonna that's notice it. it yeah. That's all. Okay. Yes. Uh. Brian, I guess, and then you're gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Damien. Damien. All righty then. Yes. All right. Let's see. I, I probably failed, but let's see, because I, if, unless my stats were right. Okay. You finally gathered. Okay. You finally gather the courage and ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. I saw a thing. Ah, oh, I see now. It's a warfare tactic. My enemies will think I'm lowered on my guard, and they'll try to attack me during that night. Little they know. We will be ready, ready for them. You and me, McCroner, we will unleash utter mayhem and take those bastards down. Oh shit, did I actually get it? I oh, mean, nice. let's make preparations. Fucking blind and I got it. Cool, you hope you convince her to change the plan so it's just the date portion of it. You're my Aww. best son. <laughs> Aww, that's cute. The last day of camp was awesome. Dahlia designed a sexy weightlifting regimen to do together. 
It focuses a lot on strengthening the glutes and pelvis. Winky face. Um, nice. Uh, All right, here we go. You finally gathered up the courage and asked your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. All right. You want to be my summer fling, huh? That sounds fucking rad. We could do so much dangerous shit together before school starts again. I have so many terrible ideas on how to blow shit up that I can only do it with another person. Oh, wow. So, Brian, care to, care to be my partner in crime? Your lawyer would advise you to say no, but your heart says absolutely yes. You're cute as hell. Aww. <laughs> the last day of camp was great. That's you and Damien cute. found some wild uh, maize in the woods and tried to ferment your own whiskey. <laughs> it tasted like goddamn garbage, but you two made it together, which is what matters. You two got wasted and ended up laying in the grass drunkenly rambling about life and love and your futures. Notwithstanding the hangover you got later, it was the perfect end to this perfect summer camp. Nice, we Yay! both got it, yeah. New events, 10 outcomes. Oh, hey, you got a special stuff. I don't know what that meant, but let's see. But still, hell yeah, we both got it. Yeah, good job. Nice, all right. Before we knew it, those weeks were gone. It felt like a hot minute and it felt like an entire lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come next for us. It felt like the end of something big. Little did you know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older and I can see it. How those years became a foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries. Wild nights became epic treasures, epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is how a constellation will always find... Wait. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation will always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by.
time. No, I think they're giving. I think the powers they said is gonna be. Okay. Um... Wait, you oh. unlocked Kofi Beast Surf, so it's a different type of drink. Yeah. Looks like. Okay. All right, that was that was really fun. We're get, we're definitely gonna do this again. God, this is a short game, but with two people, it took about an hour and a half. But it was really fun. It was worth it, and and it was cool that we were able to actually both get our love interests first time blind. But anyways. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. If you want to keep up with everything, you can subscribe to me on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Um, if you want to do some shout outs, if you have anything, um, Fox. Yeah, thanks for watch, uh, watching and everything, everyone. If you like to follow me, I am Kitsu Udon, usually like on Twitter and stuff. I think it's like a dot or something, but I'm sure that Mick Runner will put the links in the bottom of where to find my social media because I can't remember exactly. Where it <laughs> yep, yep. It's Kitsu Udon, though. So, uh -huh. see you guys later. All right, and thanks a lot for watching. So, until next time, take care.